How's it going, everybody? Uh, right now, we're going to tie a, uh, a woolly booger pattern I use for uh, trout fishing. You can also use it for uh, bass fishing as well. Uh, recipe will be posted on the uh, video title. And uh, this is in the size 8. And uh, this is also going to be the uh, weighted pattern. Uh, so I've got a size 8 hook in my vise with a bead head. Uh, when I weight the fly, I always put a bead head on it so that it's uh, weighted. But I'll just take my uh, lead here, twist it on. It also depends on how deep you want to fish this. Depending on how much uh, size and how much weight you want to put on it. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. But I have the uh, lead size and everything on the uh, video title. Now I'll take my thread, I wrap it onto the back side here, then I bring it onto the front, tie that lead in, I bring it to the back. Now, when I come to the back of this fly, Something very important is look where this barb ends and my uh, thread meets. That's where I stop everything. And by that, I mean you'll see here in a minute, but like when I tie my tail in and, and my, my chenille and all that, I stop it at that thread at that barb. That's where I line everything up. So now I'm going to tie the tail in. This is uh, some olive mar marabou that I've got here. The way I size this up is the length of this shaft here. Okay. So I uh, size that up. Then I tie everything in at this point. Okay. Get that lined up. So I used about three wraps there, and now I'm going to cut this off. It's a little more manageable. Now I'm going to tie this in. And again, now I come back to that bar point. Okay, and the reason why I use that as a marker is because if I don't, when I go to cast this fly, that tail is going to want to wrap up under that uh, that hook. So I try to bring everything back to that point. It seems to work out the best, and I can make everything even. I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, flash in my tail. So I'll grab about five or six strands of this uh, green flash boo. Wrap this around the shaft and I keep both sides separated. Just like so. I'll tie that in. Now cut them even with the tail. strand here. I always like putting flash in on my tails. Alright, now I'm going to take my uh, rooster tail, pick out a good hackle fiber here. And uh, I'm gonna power this, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back. I'm just gonna tie just just this little bit in right here. And again, when I'm tying this in, I bring it all the way back to that bar point. Okay. Now I'm gonna get me some uh, olive chenille. This is actually a lighter. 
color snail that I use. Get some contrast to the fly. I'll tie that in. And when I'm tying this stuff in, I start loose wraps and then I come back in and tie them in tight. See, I, was, I stop at the barb. I'm always stopping this thread at the barb. Now I'm going to come forward. Got all my stuff tied in here. So now I'm going to wrap this uh, Chanel. I have a rotary vise, so I'm just going to use that. You don't have a rotary vise, it's not a big deal. I say that on all my videos because I don't want people thinking that you have to have a rotary vise because you don't. It's simply not necessary. So now, I'm wrapping this in, and I will take this uh, all the way to the bead. Okay, just like that right there. And I check it to make sure. Let's see. It just so happens it winds up right there to where it's all snug up to the bead. So I want it to look even and pretty. So three or four wraps in and three or four thread wraps in front of it to lock it in. Okay, now I'm going to cut it off. I get that close as I can. All right, now I'm going to palmer this hackle in and I'm going to and when I palmer this I follow the groove of the Chanel it actually makes life a little easier it makes it look better too I follow it all the way up actually it's palmers itself really You know, I see people sometimes just do one wrap holding it in. It just makes me feel better knowing I got more wraps. Cut that off as close as I can. Now I'm going to pull this back. If I have anything loose out there, got one loose one I'm going to try to get. If you don't get them, it's not that big of a deal. I'll just try to get them all. So we're going to whip finish this and you could vary these colors this is just so happens to be my favorite color that I use in Arkansas and there it is the common woolly booger cast it out upstream about 45 degrees mend it keep mending it if the mend actually jerks the fly it's even better and then when the fly gets down 45 degrees down river let it swing out and then once it swings out all the way strip it back to you and you'll get strikes anywhere in between there but uh there it is the common woolly booger it's actually the first fly i learned to tie and uh, caught a lot of fish with it. You catch bass with it. You catch brim with it. A lot of people like to tie a size 6. I tie the uh, size 8. It's a size that I like. But anyway, enjoy that. And, uh, if you could tie this fly, you could probably tie most other flies. So uh, keep that in mind as well when you learn how to tie this fly. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, tight fly lines, everyone. And uh, we'll see you again.